So what's going on everyone, my name is Mr. Dalit JD and I have a really cool and exciting video to share with you all today. As today we are going to be explaining the unexplained mysteries of three Treyarch easter eggs which date back as far as 2010. That's right, I did just say that. From the original Black Ops 1 we've had a bunch of mysteries and Black Ops 4 Zombies has given us some clarification and given us the answer to some of those mysteries which we will be explaining in this video here today. So we jump into it. I'd like to know out of curiosity in the comment section how long have you been playing Call of Duty Zombies from? What game did you start on? And do you remember some of these mysteries if you've been playing since 2010? I'd love to know down below. If you do go on to enjoy today's video a like rating would be very much appreciated. Jumping in with the first of three of the mysteries we're going to be explaining the five portrait and I'm sure most of you are aware now that when you play Classified you've watched the intro and you'll see that Rick Coffin's portrait ended up there because Rick Dolphin just simply put it on the wall. But that is actually not the true explanation because there is a little bit more to it. And looking at Rick Dolphin's grand scheme from Black Ops 1, there was no way that he could predict that Maxis would try and overthrow him right? Well, we're going to explain all, and this five portrait mystery has been a mystery for eight years. And finally, thanks to Rich Killer, in the past few days solved a brand new cipher message on Classified, which is a very exciting one for the story. A big thank you to Rich Killer and Coldstone the Gamer. I'm going to leave a link down below in the description so you can see exactly how they solved it if you're interested in becoming part of the cipher solving community. In order to understand this message properly, I'm going to need to give you a little bit of context. Now, if you are someone who's avid in the storyline, you've been listening to all of the film reels around the map, the punch cards, you're probably going to know this anyway. The backstory involves a Major George Sawyer, Dr. Schuster, as well as Cornelius Purnell. Now these characters are all important as in 1946 they made a deal with Edward Richtofen called Operation Stapler. This was an agreement where Richtofen promised unfettered access to Group 935 research in exchange for providing safe harbour for its scientists. This involved many officers meeting with Soviet representatives to negotiate the fair split of Group 935's research. From this, the operatives extracted 40 of its scientists and their families. This was a massive achievement and it wouldn't have been possible without the help of Dr. Edward Richtofen. Whilst they didn't secure all the research, they did secure the scientists thanks to him. And if they ever do locate Dr. Richtofen, they'd like to shake his hand and thank him personally for the great service he's provided to the United United States of America. And what we learn new thanks to Rich Killer is that Richtofen actually had a list of requests which had to be met in order for Operation Stapler to be going forwards. This is where we get to hear the classic, hilarious Ultimus Richtofen that we've known and loved since Black Ops 1 and World at War. So jumping into this, here is his list. One portrait of Richtofen to be hung in the Pentagon right there explains it all. In order for this operation to go ahead, he requested a portrait of himself to be hung in the Pentagon and they went and done it. So that's the explanation all these years. If you notice very carefully in the classified intro, the portrait was always there. Richtofen was simply just straightening it up. The answer wasn't simply Richtofen just brought it with him and stuck it on the wall. It was an agreement that they had way before classified even happens. And that's hilarious. Now reading through the other list of items that were on his list, which specifically detail his personal demands. Some of these include an American baseball signed by your babe Ruth, 20 of your American dollars, 10 pennies, 4 nickels, 2 dimes, 2 quarters, 4 ones, 1 fives, 1 ten. One of these American hot dogs he's been hearing so much about, an American teddy bear, Teddy's Roosevelt's moustache from cold storage, and one polarization device to be constructed, coordinates to be specified. Now if you don't understand what this polarization device to be constructed means, that directly links in with Green Run Transit. In the Easter egg for that map, we have Maxis and Richtofen both fighting for control and manipulating our characters to activate a pylon. Activating the pylon in either Maxis or Richtofen's favor allows them to have control of that specific part of the planet using the polarization device. We could interpret this as even before Richtofen's grand scheme, he knew that potentially things could go wrong and so was instructing polarization devices to 
to be created on the earth so that he would guarantee his control of the ether. Pretty cool stuff there if I do say so myself. Continuing on this list, he also has titanium cog of his precise specifications, J. Robert Oppenheimer's chalkboard, not cleaned, build a nice flower garden outside your Pentagon vicinity, it desperately needs the colour, and President Truman's hat. Out of everything we learn from Ultimus Richtofen and the other characters on Classified, this is probably the funniest because it just goes to show how weird Richtofen really is. And I hope that Tryout continue this going forwards with even more things because this is hilarious. Some of the things he's asked for, Teddy Roosevelt's mustache, a American teddy bear, American hot dogs, a damn portrait of himself hung up in the Pentagon just so he can say that a picture of him is in the Pentagon. That's just hilarious to me. I really hope that in the future now we do see that Ultimus are going to be involved in the future of the Aether storyline. We get to see a little bit more comedic from all of them and find out some funnier stuff like this. Rich Killer also goes on to say that this is easily the hardest solved cipher in Black Ops 4 as for now, so this is pretty big stuff. Now back when Classified released a few days after, a user on Reddit called the VG expert noticed a classified document down below in the Porcine Research Lab. And this is a fairly similar thing that we just got from that cipher message. And it is extremely interesting because it talks about an operative inside the Ascension Group that Richtofen made a deal with the Soviets in 1945 behind their back and another strange list of peculiar items requested by Richtofen, which again helps to solve some of those mysteries that we've been wanting answers for for so long ago. If you've ever wondered why on Ascension we have space monkeys, we have a little bit more detail finally thanks to this message, which confirms that the Ascension group finished work on a matter transference device, the MPD, and they confirmed that Dr. Gersh oversaw the project, but as of now, the teleportation test has been limited in scope, and they hadn't done any human tests currently as the furthest they've gone is trialing involving monkeys. Now what is interesting is Purnell sent a secret operative into the Ascension group to confirm some suspicions that they had and they realized that recovered documents prove that Dr. Richtofen did in fact make a deal with the Soviets in 1945 which is the same time that Purnell made the deal with Richtofen for Operation Stapler. He says it looks like you were right Richtofen played both of us. One of the document sees details Richtofen's provisions, a list of materials he desired expressively stipulated in his agreement with the Soviets. A few on the list match the ones that he delivered to them, but there are a few unique standouts of interest, which was one pet monkey, one recording of Igor Stavinsky's The Rite of Spring, one cosmonaut spacesuit, and one lunar lander, coordinates to be specified, one miniature replica of St. Basil's Cathedral, one Feber egg yolk, and one one bottle of Stalin's vodka to see what all the fuss is about. Now, if you've ever wondered why Richtofen had a spacesuit in Ascension and how a lunar lander ended up in Kino de Toten, now you know why. He demanded a spacesuit and a lunar lander to be in Kino de Toten as part of his requirements in order to make this deal with the Soviets. So this is pretty crazy. Those are some of the details on some of the other things he asked for, such as a recording of Igor Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring. Well, this scenario depicts various primitive rituals celebrating the advent of spring, after which a young girl is chosen as a sacrificial victim and dances herself to death. Um, this is just some of the weird things that Ultimus Richtofen is into. He's mentioning a replica of St. Basil's Cathedral. This is what it looks like. And when it comes to the Feberg egg, it was crafted by Tsar Alexander III, who decided to give his wife an Easter egg in 1885. And this is what it looks like. What we learn from this is that Ultimus Richtofen is pretty weird. And he deceived and manipulated many people. And because of that, got himself a spacesuit a lunar lander in Kino de Toten, as well as a portrait of himself in the Pentagon and the polarization device in transit. So all in all, we actually learned quite a lot from these two different cipher messages. And like I mentioned at the start of the video, those are three unsolved mysteries now solved thanks to Triarch and their storytelling.
Now I'm pondering what other mysteries are there still left to be answered by Treyarch inside of Black Ops 4 Zombies. It's like ever since Black Ops 3 Zombies, we've actually had a lot of questions answered and it's really, really cool. And it's also really cool that all these things that we've pondered on for so long, we may have never ever have gotten answers for and they're now being picked up and being explained in a way which actually makes sense as to why they were there in the first place. Got to remember some of the stuff that that has been explained in this video is stuff which Treyarch I don't think were really thinking of too much at the time, didn't think they'd have to explain it, but they have gone and done so and it makes a lot of sense. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like rating, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, go thank Rich Killer and Coldstone the Gamer via the link in the description. All credit goes to them for this really, really cool find. If you missed my previous uploads, you can find those on your screen now. Now I've been on there for a little while, but if you enjoyed and you're new around here, maybe consider subscribing. Becoming a new member of the channel so you get the latest and greatest Black Ops 4 Zombies content delivered straight to your subscriptions box. But thank you for watching and I'll catch you in another one very, very soon.